Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this last demonstration of using FreeRTOS. And in this demonstration, we will be implementing essentially all of the major key features of FreeRTOS into one system. And to start off, we have this blue LED, which is blinking uh, at one hertz. And it's just a freely running task that, uh, that will blink an LED, then block itself for a second. And then we have this uh, second red LED, which is a periodic timer. Tasks and timers are not necessarily the same, although in this case, they look to be having the same function. Uh, there are certain constraints that one uh, must respect when using a software timer, such as non-blocking calls. Uh, the next thing is we have these, um, these, call these are called the ping pong LEDs. So we have this task, which receives a command from a queue, from a, sh uh, a, a shared queue, to blink the LED. Once this one does blink the LED, it'll then send a command to this LED to blink itself. And therefore, these communicate back and forth to, you know, play ping pong with each other. So, so far, we've demonstrated tasks, software timers, queues. And we also have uh, interrupt handlers. So we have a button press that will set the LED on and which also will set a one-shot timer. What the one-shot timer will do is then toggle the LED back off. So as you can see, I press it. And then if we look at the green one, a second later, it'll turn off because that's the one-shot callback function uh, toggling it back down. Next, we have a set of tasks which use... Um, which uses a mutex, two tasks which are using a mutex in order to write to this LCD without, in, with absence of race conditions so that we have an uncorrupted state of the LCD at all times. We can see how task one writes hello, task two writes hi. Had we not used a mutex, what could happen is we could have one of the tasks try to write to the LCD screen, which consists of multiple calls to, to the, um, to the LC, uh, SPI peripheral. And when doing so, because it's composed of multiple calls, if we, have a, uh, if we suffer from a context switch at that time, then we, will, we risk um, corrupting the state of the, um, of the LCD. And so yeah, that's why mutexes are necessary here. And lastly, our last uh, component of this entire system is we have uh, event um, event groups. So we have two tasks. So basically we have two um, event flags. Each task is responsible for setting one bit and then the other task for the other. And then we have a third task that is unblocked only when those two flags are simultaneously enabled. Once that is the case, then it will block again waiting for those to be enabled and this just repeats indefinitely. So in summary, we have this metropolis of different subsystems of FreeRTOS. Each subsystem demonstrates um, how we can implement functionality from RTOS in such a way where we end up with a system that is doing multiple things in a way that doesn't crash. As I, you know, we have no corruptions here, no corruptions there, no corruptions here, even when I stress the system by press, pressing the button many times, nothing crashes. And this is uh, great because this makes programming uh, embedded systems which have multiple components that are interacting with each other. Um, it makes it easier to com to configure it and program it without, you know, seg segmentation faults that can happen, without resources being um, corrupted by critical sections. And uh, overall, I think FreeRTOS is worth is worthwhile learning and it's pretty fun to learn as well. So thank you for watching.